This dollar cost averaging tracker is a simple tool that allows us to understand the benefits of the dollar cost averaging investing strategy. As you can see, we write down our inputs for the stock or ETF we want to analyze, the time frame, the contributions, how often we contribute, and even a secondary currency converter to compare currency pairs. The rest of the tracker is fully automated and changes based on the inputs. There's an information table and the classic trendy chart. At the bottom, we can see the historical data of the security and the distribution of our contributions. It tells us how many shares we're buying, how the investment develops cumulatively, and the return. The results table shows us a summary of our investments through time while comparing it to the current market value. There's a CAGR formula, or a compounded annual growth rate formula, that tells us the rate of the return we get per year, and also a separate one to see the CAGR of the instrument to compare how we performed versus the instrument. The CAGR is different to the percentage return above because it's taking into consideration the amount of time we've invested for, in this case 13 years since 2008, so it spreads the return on an annually compounded basis. We then see the final result of our dollar cost averaging in the average cost per share. It helps us appreciate the time value of a consistent investment strategy. We have successfully removed the psychological stress of worrying about the price volatility in the short term and moved towards an unbiased long-term view. There's a duplicated tab for daily instead of weekly contributions and another one for lump sum investment to understand how different strategies affect the performance and our final results. Finally, there are three tabs with a respective graph of each strategy where we can see the cumulative investment and the value of that investment through time. Before we start building the tracker from the beginning, if you want to skip the tutorial and access the ready-to-use tracker in light, dark, and cyberpunk theme, please visit my Patreon linked in the description of this video. Now, let's start from the beginning. Alright, so we're gonna open up a new spreadsheet. And we're gonna call it Planet Finance Dollar Costs Averaging Tracker. You can write down the title, and this will be the weekly one. So we're gonna start off with the inputs table. We're gonna merge this one and center. For the ticker, I'm gonna be using the SPY ETF, which follows the top 500 companies in the US. So I'm going to select the start and end date, go to data, data validation, date, and save. So now when we double click it, we get a calendar and we choose a date. We're going to select it again, go to one, two, three, and I want this format. Uh, for end date, I'm just going to write the formula today. I wanted to always update to the latest date. 2015. Contribution, we're going to go with $500 every four weeks. And for the alternative currency, we're going to start today with euros. Okay, next is the information chart. So for the name equals Google Finance. And I'm going to wrap this. and center these. We're going to copy this and paste it here. And it's going to change name to price. Now for the ticker currency. Now we're going to write the title by linking it to the currency. We're going to write the title by linking it to the input, which is zero in this case. The name should stay the same. So I'm going to add one more row here just for the formatting later. Okay, so we're going to exchange the price in US dollars to euros. So we have to write the following formula. And now for the currency pair. All right, let's work on a trendy chart now. So we want to have a big chart. So what we're going to do is select from E9 to F11 and click merge. And then we're going to write down the formula. So this formula is grabbing cell C6, which is the start date. So every time we change C6, 
the chart will change according to the date range. Here's where we're going to write the CAGR for the input. I'm going to write the following formula. Feel free to pause and just write down this formula or you can also just copy it from the description of this video. I'm writing down all the formulas I'm using so you can just copy and paste when you're creating your own tracker. At the moment it's showing a value because we're missing some cells that are linked here. So I'm going to write down next the historical data chart. There you go. So now that we have the data, we get the CAGR for the instrument from the dates that we chose. It's going to quickly format it into a percentage. And I'm going to format the following dates. Similar to how I formatted the top one. So now we're going to work on the contributions table. So we're going to be working with array formulas here. What this formula does, it grabs the contribution that we write. And then as per the interval that we choose, it follows down the sequence. All right, now let's work on the rest of the columns. This whole table is based on array formulas because we want it to be as versatile as possible. And it's going to update automatically whenever we change the inputs. I'm going to select all these numbers to the bottom and change them to a number. Let's round up to two decimal places. I'll write this formula. Again, this is going to be available in the description of the video. Okay, and that's the contribution stable. So if I change this to $1,000, you can see how this changes to $1,000 and then we can see the rest updated automatically. And then finally, the last table to work on is the results table. So we're gonna link this one to the currency that we're using and then this one to the alternative currency. And this is the formula for CAGR. Okay, and now we're gonna write the same numbers but with the alternative currency. What we're gonna do is copy this and paste it everywhere else. Uh, well, not in shares. There you go, perfect. And that is pretty much it. We have everything. So what we're gonna do now is quickly format it so that it looks similar to the demo that I recently showed you. Okay, so I quickly formatted everything. I do wanna show you the conditional formatting that I did for the historical data. So if we select the cells, and we go to format, conditional formatting, we can see that I've written these two here already. And one of the conditional formatting is with a custom formula. So I, what I did was E17 greater than zero. So whenever this cell is greater than zero, we want it to be conditionally formatted to what we want. And I just wanted to bold the 500. So what we can see clearly when the contribution is happening. Then the other conditional formatting is when cells are not empty. This is what I've used in other tutorials. All right, so what we're gonna do now is change this one to DCA weekly we're gonna right click this tab and duplicate it because we're gonna work on the daily one now it's very simple we just have to change a few words and that's it so we're gonna change it to daily and to what would be days now we're gonna go to the historical data and change from weekly to daily so now that it's loaded we can see that the dates that we get in the historical data change by day not by week and so do the contribution so now we're contributing $500 every four days 
Maybe I'll change this one to actually $125 every seven days. We're gonna duplicate it one more time and work on the lump sum. And now for the lump sum, all we have to change, well, first of all, there are no intervals. We have to change the array formula. We're gonna remove this and write. And now all we get is the initial contribution. So I'm gonna write down here, 100,000. And now, well, we have these two empty. So what we have to do is just write down a zero. We're gonna copy the zero, go to the right, press control down arrow, go to the bottom. Maybe we can even keep going further down. Go to the last row, then click the left arrow, and now press control shift and then up arrow. So now we selected all the rows until zero. And then we're gonna press control enter. Now all the lines are populated with a zero. Once that's populated, then the array of formulas work together, and then the rest of the columns are populated. And that should be it. Now we're gonna work on the graph. And we're gonna click this type of chart, the timeline chart. And now we're gonna click the data range. So for the first one, we're gonna select the date column at another range. The second range is going to be the cumulative investment. And finally, the third one is going to be the cumulative value. Click OK. We're going to click these three dots on the right and click move to own sheet. So now we have a much bigger sheet where we can see the whole graph. So this is the weekly investment versus value. And all we have to do is just do the same for daily and lump sum. And there it is. We've created the three graphs for weekly, daily, and lump sum investments. And our dollar cost averaging tracker is complete. We can try different ETFs and everything updates automatically. We could even try a stock. So there you go. It works with ETFs and stocks, even international ones. So Shopify in Canada, you can see the ticket currency is Canadian dollars and everything is versatile. I hope this really helps you understand the beauty of dollar cost averaging. This is Planet Finance. Thanks for joining me. Until next time, happy learning.